line of hope. And I wrote the description for this. I made a mistake when I wrote the description. Because when I wrote the description, I said that I would be providing lesson plans to go with each activity. And then I got thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be everybody from first graders all the way up to high school. There's no way I can set up a, a lesson plan for it that would be applicable to each one of them. Well, so what I hope you do in this is I hope that you're able to take a little nugget and maybe I'm planting a seed that some of them say, oh, that'd be cool to go back into my classroom. One of the things that I wanted to start out with by saying is that I wanted to talk just a second about what uh, Mr. Ron Selby said in his uh, keynote speech about having fun. He said, and playing. He talked about that he went into, uh, that, that they went into this club and him and his son just went and they played. And I think that sometimes we get so wrapped up in education, we're thinking, oh, I've got these, all these boxes that I have to check off, that we forget that we can go in and to an extent that we can enjoy ourselves and play. And one of the biggest compliments that I've ever had a child give me is I had this little boy and he was a first grader. And oh, okay, now I, I usually I don't tell names, but I, I'm gonna tell you this kid's name. His name was Conan. <laughs> When a, when a parent named him a child. I hope nobody in this anyone here has a child named Conan. <laughs> okay. When a parent names their child Conan, it's like self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, okay. This child was something. He came in knowing he was really the first grade. I had him all through the first grade. He started second grade when we went to mainstream, went back into the classroom. I walked down the hall one day and he was, oh, man, today. I wish I was still in the class. All we did was play. And I'm thinking, yes, we did. And your reading skills went through the roof, and your test scores went through the roof, and everything that you were doing went through the roof, and you weren't riding on the bathroom walls anymore. Okay. <laughs> play is not a bad thing. Okay. So to start off while we're working on the technology here, I want to play, uh, play a game. Okay. I would like for you, and, and, and I'll call on somebody in a second, I want you to think of a number. You're having some of you may have played this game before, and if you have, just humor me because uh, it's a little self esteem thing. Okay, but think of a number that is uh, uh, in the thousands. Okay, all your number, all the digits in the number, uh, in the number are between one and nine, one, one through nine. Okay, and don't put any of us in the blank. Don't say five thousand five hundred sixty-five. So let's see. Give me this number in your head. Yeah. Okay. Tell me the number that you're thinking. Five thousand nine hundred sixty-five. One zero one five. Okay. We'll say it again. someone in this room that I hope is trustworthy. Okay, you never give the paper to the person that they point that it's in the trustworthy. I told you this. Uh, okay, now, so you gave me the number, 1,015. Okay, now, what I'd like you to give, you give me a number. 2713. Okay, so make it go faster. I'm just going to give you one. I'm going to do 7, uh, 2, 8, Okay, now, can you give me another number? Uh, 900. 900. Huh? 900. No, it's got to be in the thousands. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I was. 1,090. Okay, 1,090. Good, okay. So now I'm just going to make up a number here. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, now, someone in here looks really smart. Right? <laughs> okay, he's got him. Now, what I would like you to do is I'd like you to take these numbers, and if you would, would you add those up? And I'm, I'm sorry for all the scripture because I didn't have something to write on it. It's a very low. Just add, add those numbers up for me. Josh, I hope you get this right. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, I do this with my class. Let's think about some things that we will all talk. Do it. Well, good grief. Angie Reagan. Oh, <laughs> Follow instructions because instructions will give me numbers between with all the digits between one and 
jumps out of the truck. He's got a hoe in his hand. Yanks the snake out of the tree. Kills it right there in front of him. Traumatizes. <laughs> I said, okay, let's go back to our seat. We get back to our seat. And, I, and, 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 and all the kids are like, what just happened? I was like, we just saw a snake and killed it. And I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, let's get serious for a second. I said, what did that, was that snake doing? They said, he was trying to get away from the rabbit. I said, what did you think was going to happen? And he said, and everybody in the class, we thought that the snake was going to eat the rabbit. What happened? Right the opposite, the rabbit attacked the snake. Who got punished? The snake got punished. Because of the way he looked. I never had to say another explanation for discrimination again. Those kids are adults. And I see them every once in a while. And it, 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 I, I would say there's not three months goes by in a year that I don't have a kid like that. Do you remember that snake in class? <laughs> and you about discrimination? Okay. I, I put a slide in my last presentation that I wish was invincible, but I'm not. I was, I, when I thought I needed to put it there, I wasn't fast enough to put it over there. It says that to ask a teacher to go by a script that is scripted is like asking an artist to paint by numbers. Okay. We have to be, and, and alternative education is the one platform, probably left in education, where we have this kind of freedom. Okay? That we can go in. We can take that teachable moment and we can seize it and we can apply it however we need to. Never be afraid to grab that teachable moment. I want to share with you, and I love it. If, if you went to any of the mother workshops, I love to read. I love books. I do a lot of read alouds. I told this in my last workshop. I'm trying, I made myself this promise I want to stay in a classroom from now on that will be a 10, 20, 30 classroom. I want to spend 10 minutes a day with every one of my students one-on-one -on -one reading out of your page, they read your page, make the connection. That every day that I spend at least 20 minutes reading a novel with my kids and discussing as a group. That every day I have 30 minutes that I just, that we just take escape time and we go and find us a safe place and we sit and we read. I've been doing that the last couple of years and it is unbelievable the impact that it's made. I fall into stuff, and I like to play by the seat of my pants, and I tell, I use that phrase over and over and over. I run across this book, and it was a little read about it, and it's called Soup. And it's about this little boy uh, uh, during the Great Depression. And has anyone ever read this book? I had never even heard of it. I just, the, 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 the school I read said, you might ought to read it. And I read it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is profound. Okay, so these boys, and, and I love the, the, the front cover of the book, I'm in this version, that they're doing this. These two boys, they're, they're country boys. And they come up with this idea. The big boy's name is Sue. The other boy is Rob, Rob, the author of the book. And, and so they, they, they're on top of this hill in their little community in the church is down there below. And so they come up with this idea. He says, we're going to go whipping apples. And so he said, what we do, they went and cut them a stick about four foot long and sharpened the end of it. Then they got an apple and stuck on the end of it. And he said, you can get it just right, and you can throw that thing. And so they're talking about how far they can throw it. So he says, I bet you that I can hit the church. And little Rob said, there ain't no way. And he says, try it. So Rob throws it. He can't get halfway there. It goes bigger. It gets up. He chokes it, knocks out the windows of the church. And out comes one of the church ladies. She's mad, runs up the hill. He says, he looks around, and guess what? Sue's gone. <laughs> And he said, here I stand with a stick in my hand. And he said, the teacher said, you just, or the lady said, you just knocked out a window in the church. And he said, what me? And she said, you're standing here. You've got applesauce all over your shirt. You did it. And he's like, I can't throw it that far. And she said, sure you can. And he said, well, you try. So she grabs the stick, sticks an apple on it, chunks it, hits the neighbor's house, knocks his window out. <laughs> and, she, and here he comes out now. She says, run, because he's crazy. They take off running. They go to this little shed. That's where Sue's hit. Sue's five days and they're chasing him. He runs out and runs right into the guy that gets, he gets a whipping. Okay. It was a cute story. My kids were laughing, bent over double. And I said, I got it. So you know what we did? We jumped up. We went outside. And we went looking for sticks. And we cut sticks. And I said, it has to be four foot long. Guess what they had to do? And we just measured them. And then they get these sticks. And we come, and I take my pocket knife, and I sharpen them up, and I, I, I pull out a bag of apples, and we go out to the playground. And so I said, okay, we're gonna, I, I'll need to know something. I said, everybody get your piece of paper. Do you think you can throw an apple, or you can whip it for me? Well, all of them said, we've never whipped an apple, so we're 
around and they line up and they get their stick. And they whip an apple. First they throw it. Then they whip one. Okay? All of a sudden there's these things. Why is mine not going as far as yours? We start talking about
I'm letting them play with rocks. And they think that it's a game. And, and if you ever, and, and lettuce grows really good, if you ever let a kid eat a salad, I'll tell them to grow them like this. It's just, it's, a, it's amazing. Okay, that, that's, that's one of our things. Uh, and, and that, this is the only one that really costs money. I, I probably, you could do one of these projects for about $25. Uh, I raised chickens. This, this picture, I, I keep this picture, and this is another picture. My dad, when he was alive, he came to the school and he did a, class, a construction class with my kids. They built this together. And, and, and we, we raised, we raised, got chickens, the kids took care of them. There were so many measurements, carpentry, angles. I mean, you, I can not even start, not even get into the chickens, what we learned with this project. Um, I, I, want, I want to tell you one real quick, a couple of quick stories. I, one of the things that I always tell my kids is I will never lie to you. And so when we got these chickens, we, we, the first year that we did it, we did this running record with, with how much the chickens cost, how much that the, 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 the materials for the box cost, had all this, how much our feed cost. We're putting all this into it. We found out that when the chickens started laying eggs, those were some of the most expensive eggs in the entire world. Okay. But when our chickens started our, we got pullets when they first laid. Now, if you don't know anything about chickens, when chickens first start laying, their eggs are typically fairly small. And as the chicken, the chicken gets older, the eggs get bigger. Okay? So one day I'm sitting here and my kids were so excited when they, when they went out because this is, and the kids want to come to school when they're going out to check the eggs. I mean, I don't let it sound crazy, but it's true. Okay? So we, we had four chickens. We finally started getting eggs. And, and, and the kids are like, Mr. Dave, those eggs are so little. And I'm like, don't worry, they'll get bigger. Okay, 
it was a teachable moment. There are some, and, and we said talk about it, there are things in this world that we are going to make mistakes. And we're going to say, I know better. And sometimes it's hard to put the things back in once we've made that mistake. So we need to, and so we're having this whole lesson about, and, it, and it's, it's I, I'm, I'm addressing it here. It's science, I'm addressing it. Math, I'm addressing it. Social, emotional, it's all of that. But sometimes I think you know marmalade. Sometimes the janitor really gets ticked off at you if you come in and, and there's a lawnmower jetted out in the floor, though. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> okay. Now, this one is crazy. I stole this. Miss Lori Lamb is the one of the most amazing presenters, one of the most amazing things in education that I know of right now. Okay. Last year, she went to a class very similar to this where she just did a bunch of really quick things. I don't know if any of y'all have ever seen this. Okay. The rocket launcher is an amazing thing. I brought it, probably, probably people have seen this before. All it is, is just PVC pipes, okay? And it, and it has some 45 degree angles, some T's with 90 degree angles. Guess what, I'm using math terms that kids are just soaking up and they know what it means now, okay? There's about 10 inch, and, and she said that they just watch a video that cut the pipes and made it. What you do is, is you can use your piece of paper. Now she, had, she went to the Dollar Tree and found these little things, but I found a video that showed how to make it. You take one piece of paper, you wrap around it, real tight, you put a tape on it, then you take another piece of paper on the outside, you do it again. But then on the end of it, you fold it at the end, you make a, a, a cylinder that goes over the top. You stomp this thing, and that thing will shoot all over that seat. Okay, now, I know some of y'all seen little things on the fingers, but, so we'll do it in a second. Okay, <laughs> but here's what I found out. And this, and this is the only reason I brought this, because I figured a lot of people have seen this. This is on YouTube, it's nothing new. What I found out is when I brought this in, all of a sudden, light bulbs started going off. And the kids, they did this, and they did just the this. And they was like, but Mr. David, think about it. What does a real rocket look like? And I said, it's got these little things on the bottom here. And they're like, I've got kids cutting stuff out. And then all of a sudden, the, art, the, the most amazing thing that happened, it made me so happy. The art teacher walked by and said, we're going to do it. We, you know, we, we kind of get louder once in a while. And, she, and, and so she said, well, I said, we're making these rockets. And she said, well, that looks so funny. She says, yeah, bring, she said, tomorrow y'all have a party class. Bring your uh, rockets to class with you. My gosh, the next thing I know, my art teacher is teaching these lessons where she's, she, she's showing how to cut a circle and cut a line in it, like a little pivot thing here. She had, these kids made rockets that looked awesome. They got to cut, it was their whole art project for the day. And then they sit there and they compare how it went better. But seriously, the amazing thing that you can stomp on that thing and it, you don't care if I do that. Okay, so like, I mean, that thing goes high. Okay, and the cool thing about it is the better that they do their stuff, and that's just hitting it with my hand. Then the great thing is, now it's COVID time, so one person is on it, you just have this little, and it goes back out, and you can do it over and over and over. Okay, but we do measurements, we do all these. Uh, so what I'm saying is, like Miss Ward, when she presented, it was a simple thing. If you take a simple thing and the kids love it, let it be a big thing. We had contests. We had measurements. If, when I do it next year, I'll, I'll have some kids that, will, that I, I'll carry from year to year. So what we're, I'm going to have them is I'm going to do what they call reverse engineering. I'm going to have them take this thing apart. They'll do all the measuring. They'll write out the instructions for the younger kids to be able to build it. There's no limits to watch and how you can use a stupid piece of PVC pipe to teach all kinds of things if you're willing to think outside the box. And I actually love it. How much time do I have left? I'm terrible about time. Eight minutes. I have eight minutes. Oh gosh, that's not gonna be enough. Okay, <laughs> so, I'm gonna move to the next project.
I'm living inside about having somebody that wasn't familiar with my program come in and sit in each one of my classrooms. Which I can talk about yet. These three kids come in though, and I was like, I want to have my kids that run the game. You know, because you don't have to worry about that. You know, and, and the weird thing is, you know, when I had to just get into my program, I don't know if y'all know this, you can have five kids in your class and think we perfect, you had number six in it. <laughs> okay. So I, this is what's going to happen, but he just will whip them in. Part of his reward is when he does what he's supposed to do, he gets elected, he'll do with his head on up, but he, he, he loves Frozen, and he sings Frozen really loud, and he gets in that singing voice, and I think, oh God, my kids are going to get me, period. But then I saw something else, my kids started looking out to me, you want to, you want to watch this with me, or you want to do this with me? It turned out to be a beautiful thing, and I told myself, the only way it's going to work is sometimes I need to work with him, and so there are times I would do activities with him, and the aide would just step in and take my class. Well, I told her, I said, one day, I said, something I'm really, really struggling is I said, I have trouble getting my kids to creatively write. I said, that, that's, I, I said, I love to read. I got them reading. I love it. I said, they don't create why. She said, well, I, I saw this thing. I said, well, 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 let's play a game with them. So I said, you, she said, well, let's play one at a time. So we started in. So she came up to him. She says, we're going we're gonna to play a pretend game. And she started this conversation. She said, we're going we're gonna to make a, a, a mythical creature. We need to design a mythical creature. We're going to put stuff. So she started out asking some questions. If you were going to do this, what would it look like? What would his head look like? And the kids said, okay, let's write that down. And so the kids started writing this little journal. And so they come up with this creature, and then they got to name it at the end. And so when the first, she just did it with one boy, and he got so excited. And here's the thing about drawing attention. If you see two kids from one, and one kid can get excited, it's contagious. Because before that kid got finished, you know what the others are saying? When do I get to go up there and do that? And then the crazy thing happened. The art teacher, the same one that helped you with the rockets, she found out about it. And she said, I can draw that. And so the next thing we know is all of my kids, they sat down and they wrote this story, one at a time, one on one, about a creature. And then they would give it to Miss McKinney, and she would sit and she would draw it for them. And give it back, and they were so excited. So we decided, we're going to turn it into a book. So we wrote our own book, and at the end of the year, this was the gift that I was able to give to give my kids. Now, it, it couldn't have happened without a group of people working together. This is one of the things that I learned. There's so many things that you do that if you let the people around you know what's happening, and they love education, they're going to say, what could we make better? And so what happens is, is each one of these kids, they got to come in, and they designed a creature. Now, I'm not going to read all of these to you, but I, I like this one. This is the very first one. He says, if I could create an animal, what would it be? He says, my animal would be as big as an elephant. My animal would have, 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 has a rhino head. He is brightly colored like a flamingo, and he has neon yellow stripes, almost like a race car stripe. It was a vibrant peacock feather. It's like a crown on his head. He has a nose like the Grinch and a mustache that resembles his cowboys. He was, has 18 ostrich legs with monkey toes. To have two, uh, uh, to have two, uh, it has two small T-Rex arms with human white hands. It lives in the jungle. It's like, like the plants and butterflies, but occasionally the treats itself to a ripe banana. He is very friendly and he likes hugs, uh, with it, that, that give tight hugs with his T-Rex arms. And he says, we shall name him Kelly. That's the name of the age of that <laughs> For a child to see something that they created in their mind be turned into something real, it was amazing. Every kid got to come in, and some of the things that they come up with, these creatures, were absolutely amazing. Okay, so everyone in this, the, the teacher, the, she, she made, made one for everyone. Every kid is unique. You see their own personalities coming out in it. And it was, yeah, it was, it was just beautiful. Now, some of them got a little bit gory. But that's okay because it was, it was creativity here. Okay, so they go through this one. This was, this was the first uh, second grader. He's brilliant. He wanted a cow that had speakers for legs that, that oh. instead of instead of moving and beatbox. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, it was great though. And, and our art teacher, she she was so good. I mean, she, so she has several copies of this book herself now. There was one kid that came up with the idea that he wanted a two-headed creature, one that would look like me, and one would look like the ate it. Uh, okay. and, 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 and they ate boogers. Okay. I, I'm okay with it because they're creative. Okay. Then we get to this one, and this is the little boy that, with, with autism, he could not, it bothered him to put two different animals together. He could, I mean, two different types of animals. So his, if you read the description when he was talking about it, it says it will uh, have large red wings as big as an eagle. He will have a head like a cardinal. He will have a crown of red feathers on his head. His tail will be red. It's short and fluffy. Black eyes, orange talons. It eats bird food because he cooked it. 
bird that ate bananas. I mean, you know, so, so he's there. But you could see the child's personality come out of him with kids. And that, that's what was so important. When we, when we rewrote these and we wrote them and we proved them, guess who did all the setting up on the computer doing all the back? The kids did. There was all these lessons to about. So at the end, I wrote my own creation, creature creation. And, and so, how many times did we just have a pillow? It's about time to Okay, so, 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 so let, let me just do this. So my creature was the perfect student of David Ward. It says if I could create the perfect student, I would want him to be good with the electronics like Tony. He would love to solve tough math problems in his head like Kane. He would be fascinated with history and know everything that happened about the past like Ezra. He would love animals and be willing to try new things like Max. He would have great sense of humor and be a good, good listener like Casey. He would love to read and devour books like Jack. He would be determined and helpful like Dexter. He would be willing to work on his weaknesses. He would care about the people around him. He would face his fears. He would work hard even when blood needs him. He would build new things for fun. He would be patient and understanding with his classmates when they're struggling. He would share with the people around him. He would know that his teacher loves him and thinks that he's capable of anything. He would be called the end to And that's the name of our program. Okay. And, and so each one of the kids, when I read that, I'll be honest, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a powerful thing that when they saw how someone, when they saw what they saw, 